In order to function optimally, humans need to obtain between 70 and 80% of their calories from an energy source, carbohydrates or fat. Seeing as humans have subsisted primarily off of animal foods for hundreds of thousands of years, it makes sense that this energy source is largely animal fat. And when we look at the habits of our hunter-gatherer ancestors, various indigenous groups, it becomes very clear that they had preferences for specific fatty parts of the animal, as well as organ meats in some cases. Today, we are going to take a look at three cuts. Navel belly, aka beef belly, uh, what some people know more as bacon, as bacon is made from pork belly. We're going to take a look at chuck roll, as well as short rib. Cuts that usually aren't too expensive, but are predisposed to having a high fat percentage. And this is because grain-fed animals, regardless of the cut, tend to have more fat deposits that animals naturally used to never have. You know, wild game animals and grass-fed cattle carry fat in certain parts. It's not natural to have the level of marbling that we see in ribeye steaks. Normally, the brisket, the short rib, the belly, the kidneys, that's where animals naturally store fat. That's why we are looking to offer these cuts at Frankie's Free Range Meat. If you guys haven't checked out frankiesfreerangemeat.com, you guys will be able to pre-order fatty beef boxes that will be reminiscent of what I am showing you guys today. So let's take a look. A lot of people are familiar with short ribs. Short ribs are great because regardless of what type of animal it is, it always has a nice layer of fat, usually one layer by the bone and one layer on top. Short ribs are one of the most flavorful cuts. They usually come like this. Uh, you can always trim this bone out fairly easily, uh, but we're just going to throw this on the grill as is. This is a pretty good portion size, approximately half a pound. Uh, this is beef belly. This is about three to four pounds of beef belly. And belly has very specific fat deposits as well as muscle meat deposits depending on where it comes from. The belly is a huge part of the animal and there is a huge variance. So sometimes, you know, as you see on the end here, the belly can be pure fat and other times, you know, the belly can almost be pretty lean. You know, it can be almost all muscle meat. So what we're going to be looking to do is portion this into reasonable sizes. Maybe a belly like this would be cut into three pieces. And then what I like to do is you could throw this piece on the grill just like this. It's perfectly thin enough to do that. If you have a thicker end of belly like this, what you could do is, you know, you could cut it into strips and put those strips on the grill just like bacon. Uh, we might as well do some of that today. So if you want to break it down further, you could take a strip like that and just grill it as bacon. Here we have three different parts of the chuck. Uh, as you can see, this part of the chuck is a little bit leaner. Uh, doesn't really have as much fat as we'd like to see on a carnivore diet. Uh, this piece is a bit fattier. This is a pretty good measure of things we would like to sell. This piece of fat is so delicious when you cook it and the amount of marbling in this, and it's fairly tender as well. This piece of the chuck has the bone in. We will be selling it deboned although this piece does have a very nice amount of marbling and fat deposit. And the bone does add a lot of flavor. So all of these cuts are very flavorful. They can be thrown on the grill. Uh, they're great. Uh, we're going to throw this piece on the grill today. Uh, the, the flavor between these two pieces is pretty similar, but the flavors of meat on the truck can vary drastically. This meat tastes different than this meat, which tastes different than this meat. So uh, we'll just try this for today and we'll save this for another time. Overall guys, this is between eight and nine pounds of meat. So we will be offering a little bit more than this in our fatty beef box. All right guys, we got a nice wood fire. I like putting the fatty cuts on first because it flares up the flame a bit, warms the grill up for the next cuts that I put on. And a lot of these cuts are recognized for being tough pieces of meat. But unless you're cooking them, you know, well done, they're not going to be tough. As long as you cook the meat rare and there's still a little bit of red in it, it's, it's completely tender and delicious. So we'll throw the short rib on the back here. The chuck roll. 
it's so easy to get nice color on these fatty cuts that you actually have to be careful not to, to get too much browning. Uh, what I usually end up doing is I'll take it off the grill and finish it in the oven. Especially with something thick like this short rib, it's pretty hard to cook it all the way through reasonably without burning it on the outside. That's plenty of color for me on the beef belly. Chuck roll nice and crispy as well. If you guys are curious about my grill setup, check out my last day of eating. I explained it a little bit. We're going to take a look at the short rib first. Uh, it's, it's essentially raw in the middle, that's how I like cooking my meat. But the thing about the short rib is it's so fatty sometimes that, you know, over half of it can be fat. So when we do cut into the meat, you guys can see my cooking temperature on this. It is literally blue rare in the middle. There is a bit of a sear on the outside. And as I said, if you want to take this to rare or even medium like a pink color, it's still very tender and flavorful. You can, as long as you cut it against the grain, you can eat this very effectively. So what I usually do is I just take a little bit of salt on the meat. And everyone's led to believe that a steak is supposed to be like as tender as filet mignon or ribeye. And if there are only two cuts of the animal that melt in your mouth like that, it's not really practical. And this is delicious and it's one more bite. I'm telling you guys, get your hands on some short rib, sear it real nice on the outside, cut it against the grain, a little bit of salt, completely delicious. Uh, let's move on to the beef belly. So this one's actually cooked a bit more. Uh, this one's pink in the middle, it's medium. And even when cooked to a medium, this is super tender. If you guys can see, the grains of the belly are running this way. So when I cut perpendicular to those lines, it makes the meat very tender. Think of it this way. When you cut with the grain, you're chewing several muscle fibers, several very large muscle fibers. When you cut against the grain, you're chewing much more smaller muscle fibers and anything that's smaller is going to be more tender. Not only are the short rib and the belly some of the fattiest cuts on the animal, they are also some of the most flavorful. These cuts are so fatty and rich, you might actually have to add some lean muscle meat to them. I would say the belly is more tender when sliced properly. Uh, maybe if we broke down the short rib a little more, cut it a little better, it would be just as tender. Uh, but the belly is definitely a little bit easier to work with, a little bit easier to break down. The flavor is definitely unique. Belly has a very specific flavor, you know, reminiscent of bacon in a way. There's uh, a flavor specific to every single muscle group on the animal, and belly has its own flavor. Very rich, very decadent, and if not the richest part of the animal. Uh, let's give the chuck roll a shot. This is very rare. Anyone saying that chuck roll is too tough to eat like a steak hasn't tried this. 
Although this is a very fatty chuck roll, it has much less fat than these two other cuts. So it's a nice change of pace. Say you're really hungry, you have some of this super fatty and rich short rib and beef belly, then you move on to the chuck roll to satiate your protein appetite. You generally have an appetite for fat and then protein separately. So what I like doing is eating these super fatty cuts first and then once I'm not as hungry I move on to the chuck roll, the slightly leaner cut. There still is a nice amount of fat on the chuck roll for flavor as well as more fat macronutrient energy. It's just not necessary to be you know, eating pure fat halfway into your meal. On the topic of flavor, I don't really have a favorite here. I think the belly is great, the short rib is great, especially if you're hungry. The chuck roll has a nice mix of fat and protein. Probably, you know, if you've never had these cuts before, have a fatty chuck roll, have some short rib, have some belly, try each one, see what you like before making an incredible amount because, I mean, yeah, I will sit down and eat two pounds of beef belly or two pounds of short rib, but what you might find yourself doing is you'll cook up a bunch of beef belly, it was too fatty, so you end up leaving some extra fat left over for tomorrow. And that's not an issue, you just kind of want to have a reasonable balance of you know, macronutrients throughout the day. And to me, this is one of the easiest ways to achieve it. Uh, if you guys you know, do have an issue adding fat to your diet in general, I did a video last Saturday on how to add fat using pure beef fat and bone marrow. So when you don't have access to these fatty cuts, you can use things like bone marrow, beef fat, even brains. Uh, and if you're not allergic to egg yolks or butter, uh, to add those things to your diet to increase the fat percentage. Uh, to me, as I am allergic to those things, uh, this is what I do. And it's a delicious, easy, straightforward, low inflammatory way to do it. Uh, since we're consuming grass-fed meat, we have overall a nice balance of fat soluble vitamins. You know, the fat here has vitamin A, uh, it's probably small amounts of vitamin D, E, K2 of course, small amounts of the precursor, omega-3s, alpha linolenic as well as conjugated linoleic acid but overall the main determining factor in the nutrient density of your diet uh, really is one the organ meats you're eating where you're obtaining specific nutrients and two the overall quality of the fat intake in your diet nutrients are contained in the fat if you're not eating lots of high quality fat you don't have the optimal nutrient dense diet so thank you guys for joining me today uh, if you guys would like to check out Frankie's free range meat and support my vision of providing everyone with meals like this, check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com uh, where you can order a fatty beef box that will have beef cuts that have similar ratios of fat to what we have here. Uh, in addition to that, you can also pre-order a fat pack uh, if you just want to add fat to your meals. And we have a bunch of other products on the website that you can check out from organ meats to salmon roe, very high quality nutrient dense foods. frankiesfreerangemeat.com Thank you guys again for watching. Uh, if you guys want to support me further, uh, you can check out some of the other YouTube videos on my channel. Uh, let me know any videos you guys would like to see next week. Uh, I think I'll be doing a uh, How to Get Started Carnivore video on Monday because of Thomas DeLauer, some popularity coming in. Uh, but that's it, guys. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.